You know, Lexington sits in the heart of the bluegrass region and is known as the horse capital of the world. Now, in order to make that claim, there's a lot of elements that come together. One of them is the very famous Root and Riddle Equine Hospital. We're about to follow one of their veterinarians as he makes his early morning calls to farms in the area. Growing up on a farm, my background has always been uh, working with farm animals, uh, livestock. Um, certainly have dogs and cats, uh, love dogs and cats, but never a passion of mine to work on them. I enjoy mine, I don't know how much I enjoy other people's dogs and cats. Um, with livestock, uh, particularly the horses, uh, I enjoy all the horses, regardless if it's mine or someone else's. What we're looking at here, Bob, is the surface of the lung on this foal. As you can see, there are several areas of the lung that are lighting up. Uh, looks like little flashlights along the screen that are pointing downward. Uh, this is roughening along the surface of the lung. Uh, that roughening can be in a, a response to uh, allergens, pollens, um, or infection. And what we need to determine is, is there a significant enough change to be concerned about pneumonia in this foal? Because we want to we want to determine if the foal has pneumonia or has an illness uh, prior to showing symptoms of it. So this is an ultrasound examination of her uterus. And what do you see? Well, absence of a fetus, which is, uh, confirms our suspicions from the last examination. This mare has, in fact, lost her pregnancy. Um, there's no remnants of the fetus that are remaining. Uh, so at this point, we'll wash her up and we'll do a uterine lavage to remove any, <clears throat> any inflammation that's in her uterus. This is Savannah. She is a uh, nine-year-old warm blood, Hanoverian, and uh, she is about 90 days pregnant. So we're going to take a look, make sure the fetus is developing as expected, uh, make sure the placental membranes look like they should. and. Uh, if in the correct position, we're gonna to try to determine gender at this stage. Um, so we'll see if the baby cooperates. These are legs here. So right now this foal is being an acrobat standing on his head. His head's down here. His heart is beating right here. This is his rib cage on either side and his butt's up in the air. Which is just what Renee wants, an athlete. Nice athletic foal. The other thing Renee wants is a nice healthy filly. And we can see here we've got a femur and a femur. The tail is here. This portion right here is the genital tubercle. This is the uh, gentle precursor for the for the female so this baby that she's carrying is a filly uh, which is nice and exciting to know uh, some people like to know in advance uh, because it can help them determine how they will manage um, uh, the mares in the future um, it may determine whether a mare is sold while she is in foal sometimes uh, based on previous production, if this uh, mare had produced a filly that had been a fantastic show horse or a fantastic race horse, um, that may elevate her stature, her value, and to potential buyers. We had a filly who, actually a colt, I beg pardon, who decided it was his time to come into the world, but he wasn't ready to come out, and I did call Dr. Tanner at about 4.30 in the morning because I was I had never had that challenge before and he was here within 10 minutes and thanks to Dr. Tanner that is a viable colt to this day, healthy and has probably a very lovely dressage career ahead of him. He creates my success for my farm. 
because without them, I don't, it's, it's guessing. Rather than guessing and spending money, he can hone in and make my breeding program a successful breeding program. He'll come in ultrasound, uh, all our mares, he'll keep them healthy and up to date on their inoculations and just an overall general health for our breeding program to make it a sound, viable program. You know, there have been a few of those times, um, and, and those are the times that keep you going because you have a lot of those tough times where you, where you don't have those moments. And uh, we, we try not to talk about too much of the tragedy, but there's certainly a lot of tragedy with horses, um, regardless whether it's horses racing to the track or foals being born. Um, uh, there certainly can be complications of a birth, uh, and sometimes things don't go perfectly. And when you're there, uh, when, a, when an astute farm manager or horse owner calls you at the first sign of trouble and you're able to arrive uh, to deliver a newborn foal that would not have come without your assistance and, and would not have had a happy ending, uh, it's incredibly rewarding. Uh, regardless if it's 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m. in the morning, um, it, it's incredibly rewarding. So I've had uh, several of those moments um, you know, foals born, not breathing, and then after CPR and resuscitation, um, you know, they t you watch them take their first breath, and you stand there and you watch them stand up for the first time. And, uh, you know, you watch them stand there and you stay in the stall, and before you know it, you've been there for two hours, and you stand and watch them nurse for the first time. So it's uh, incredibly rewarding when you, when you have cases uh, like that. I'd say for a young student who is considering being a veterinarian, uh, a student who is interested in science, I would say shadow a veterinarian, that there are a lot of opportunities and it'd be really uh, important for them to see which direction they want to go with, with uh, the field of veterinary medicine.